Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to take a look at the contact service that's built into OS X Server. Now, for some of you, you may use uh, other contact services to sync your contacts, things like iCloud or uh, Google uh, contacts. And that may be how you keep your contacts in sync between your different maybe iOS devices and your Macs or your PCs and that sort of thing. And that may work fine for you, and you may not even need this service that's built into OS X Server because you've already got those things running. But there may be some of you out there who want to have a private contact server. Uh, maybe you work in a field that requires you to protect contacts, or maybe you run a business uh, and you just don't want your contacts out there on the Internet anywhere. Even though they're password protected, you just don't want the potential even for those things showing up anywhere. And so this is where the contact service built into OS X Server would be perfect for you. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at how do you set up your own contact service using OS X Server. And then I'm going to take a look at how, uh, once you've got that set up, how that works, the things that you can see. And we're even going to talk a little bit about how do you create a shared contacts account. So here we are inside the contact service. And as you can see, it's a pretty simple service. Uh, the service isn't on. We don't have a green light on either side here, so we know it's not running. Um, but you can note, you notice that we have the regular access uh, area here that we have in all of the services. That basically gives us the status and then the permissions of who has access to this service. And again, you can always go in here and uh, click on Edit and change this information, right? You can choose uh, whether you want all users or only some users. You can choose... Uh, uh, when they're con how they can connect, if they can connect from all networks or only private networks or some networks. Uh, so you can fine-tune how people access this. Uh, for most people, though, the all users, all networks is probably the best option. That way you can access it anywhere and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that you do have the option to do that. Now down here in the settings, we really only have two very simple settings. We've got the push notification service, which is already enabled because we enabled that in the calendar server. Uh, if you haven't seen that screencast, you might want to go back and take a look at it. But as soon as we click edit over here, it basically brings down this drop down that uh, has us put in our Apple ID. And uh, then once it does that, it, it basically gives us a certificate for all of our push notifications. And you can see this one expires next year. And so I'd have to renew it. And if I ever needed to renew it, I'd just come in here and click on Renew. So I'm going to say Done. So that's enabled and ready to go. And you want that push notification because anytime you make a change on any of your devices, then that change gets pushed to those devices. You don't have to hit a manual sync or anything like that. It'll actually get pushed over the air itself. Now, one more uh, setting we've got here is to allow users to search the directory using the contacts uh, application. Now, what that means is that within the contacts application, it's going to set up our directory. And our directory basically is all of the users, user accounts we have in this users area here. And by checking this, it allows those users who sign up for the service to be able to search for these users in here and their contact information and anything else you put in there. Uh, so I'm going to check that just to show you what that looks like. And, and I would say probably on a typical basis, you'd want to go ahead and check that just because it does give you access to that search. Now, if you don't want anybody to see the users you got up here, then it might be a good idea not to uh, check this box here. So now that we've got everything set up and ready to go, I just throw the service on here, just throw the switch. And again, it's going to ask me, do I want to allow access from the Internet? And this is the reachability service that's uh, just coming into play here saying, hey, do you want me to open the ports on your router to allow people to get access to your contact server when they're outside your network? And so I'm going to allow that because I do want uh, it to be uh, uh, accessible on a broad basis. And you notice as soon as I've thrown the switch, I've got that all set and going now. You see I've got contacts set up and uh, the server is running now. Now you'll notice it says that it's available on server.local. That's because it does take a little bit of time for server to register that the ports have been open and everything's accessible uh, out on the internet. So that'll eventually change to my uh, domain name. So if you ever see that right away, uh, just know sometimes it takes a little while for that to change. So now that we've got this set up, what I'm going to do is go on a screen share to one of my other Macs and show you how to set up the newly uh, made contact service on your other Macs. Okay, here we are over on a screen share. Uh, this is on uh, one of my Macs in my network. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can add the, uh, the contact service to your other Macs. You can come in here to System Preferences and go to Internet Accounts and add it like we showed in the Calendars uh, service. And so if you wanted to add it that way, you could do that. You would just add another uh, server account and add a card dev account for that. Uh, but what I thought I'd do in this one is just show you a different way of doing it, and that is inside the actual contact service itself. So here we are inside the contact service, and you can see we've got uh, 
kind of all contacts on my Mac and directory services. You notice I don't have any contacts set up yet. So what I'm going to do is add the actual server contacts. So to do that, you want to come up to contacts and you want to go to add account. And what will happen is right inside the contact service, you'll get the same screens that you see inside system preferences. So it's just another way to be able to set this up. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another account uh, to this. We're going to say continue. And then in this account, you want to make sure it is a CardDAV account. Uh, you could also do LDAP if you want, but we want a CardDAV account uh, to add in here. And so you want to put in your username, password, and your server address. So let me put that information in here. And when you get to the server uh, address, you're going to want to put in your server's address. Just like that. So we've got that set up, and we're going to say create. And so it's going to go through the process of verifying uh, your account, making sure everything's set up the way it needs to be. And it should then add uh, our server account for our contact service. And it could take a little bit of time just depending on how uh, the network traffic is and it's reading and verifying. So I'm going to let it go ahead and do its thing here. And then I will come back and show you what it looks like once we've added the account. Okay, here we are on the other side. And as you can see, we've added the OS 10 server up here. It's got all contacts. Uh, again, I don't have any contacts. That's why they're not showing there. Uh, you'll also notice over here, I've got all directories. I've got directory services, and I've got OS 10 server right here. Now, what this allows me to do is to be able to search on my directory. So, for instance, on my directory, I had a, uh, an account for a Cheryl. So, let's do that and let it do a search. And so, this is, again, the... Uh, account that I've got on the server right inside my users uh, area and it's showing this user with w whatever contact information I have on them which in this case would just be an email address and so now we've actually got the ability to search our directories now on the server which is really nice now those names you'll notice won't show up automatically they just don't uh, you know populate here you have to actually do a search to search on the server to find those things and so you can see that's the same here for diff our different directories and directory services now, one of the things that uh, that's on here is that once I set up this contact service the way I set it up on server, I'm the only one that uh, has access to any contacts that I add on there. And so what happens is if, I, <clears throat> if I've got my contacts uh, service set up by users, like per user, any contacts that that user adds are only for that user account. They don't go across all of your contacts accounts. But what if you wanted to do that? What if you wanted to set up, let's say, a family contact server where everybody had access to everybody's contacts so that as you added them, uh, they would just show up on everybody's devices instead of just the one user who's added that account? Now, there is a workaround uh, to do that. And so what I'm going to do is go back over the server and show you what that looks like. Okay, here we are back over on the server. And now to add a shared account, what you would need to do is go into users over here. And what we're going to do is just create a user account that is a shared account that basically all of our users would then log into. So you might want to call it, let's say, you know, shared contacts. And that becomes the account. And so there's the short name. We really don't need an email address, but we do need a password. So let me put one in. So once we get that all set up, uh, for home folders, we're just going to say none services only. That way it won't create any weird home folders or anything there. And then we're going to go ahead and just create this user. And so now we've created a user that's called Shared Contacts. Now, on all of your different Macs then that you've got that you want to have the shared contacts, like I said, if you want to share a family contacts or, or anything like that, you would then go in and actually add this account. And by doing that, it would basically then sync all of your contacts that are in this account with all of your devices. And so you would just go back and actually do the sync like we did uh, on the, uh, you would do the setup like we did for the individual user. But now you would have Shared Contacts. So hopefully that gives you a good idea on how to use the contact service. Like I said, it's a very simple service. Uh, it really is easy to use. Uh, it, it also just kind of allows you to control your contacts yourself and, ba and basically just works as a push, uh, push service just like it does with iCloud, but you've got your own iCloud service now for contacts. Uh, one more thing I want to point out, you see now the reachability says over the internet at my server domain. Like I said, it, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to do this, and I want to point that out because others were having issues with it. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.